I really appreciate the time that we had reading those Seth books because if it had not been for those books, I don't think that I would have had the transition that I did of being so afraid of this process to being so involved and so happily involved in it. In fact, as Jerry said, I was so excited after reading the books. I really wanted to go meet Seth. I wanted to meet this non-physical being that had all this wisdom. And I wanted to meet Jane and Rob too. But we called information, their number was non-published. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to figure out what to do next. And we were having lunch in a restaurant in Scottsdale, Arizona. And a total stranger sitting behind us who we were not conversing with turned to us and said, have you read any of the Seth books? Well, we couldn't believe it because we hadn't told a single person that we were reading those books. And he said, did you know that Jane Roberts is dead? Well, we didn't know that. And it, it upset me so much because I felt like somebody had told me my sister was dead and I hadn't heard about it. It was shocking and I was so disappointed because I was so excited about meeting Seth and about meeting them and, and uh, now I knew I couldn't. Within one or two days, uh, our best friends, friends and business associates mm -hmm. there in Phoenix came to us and they said, we have a tape we want you to hear. And they were acting weird, just like Jerry was acting over that book. And I said, well, what is it? And they said, well, it's channeled. Well, I didn't know what channeled meant because in the Seth books that word was never used. And so I said, well, what do you mean? And so as they began to explain a little bit, then I realized that it was the very process that we'd been experiencing through these Seth books. And they said, there's a, a woman who is coming through Phoenix and you can make an appointment. I think it was $100 for a half an hour. Yeah. Could ask any questions we wanted. And so we made an appointment to sit and see this woman and meet her non-physical entity. And I can remember going over there, how excited we were. Mm -hmm. And it, we met in a beautiful home in Phoenix. And it was in the middle of the day. It was broad daylight. There was no spooky stuff or anything. All comfortable, all pleasant. And as we sat and visited with these non-physical beings, well, actually, I should say, as Jerry sat and visited with these non-physical beings, I don't think I said a word no, on the first meeting. I was absolutely amazed. Jerry had a notebook full of questions. He had questions he said he'd saved up since he was six years old. He just fired those questions in, and then our time was up. The half hour passed so quickly. We felt so wonderful, and I said, can we go back tomorrow? Because now I had some mm -hmm. questions, and I wanted to talk to these entities, and their name was Theo. And so when we went back the next day, I asked what we could do to move faster in our goals, and they said affirmations, and gave us a wonderful one. And we knew about affirmations. We were already using them. And then I said, what else? And they said, meditate. Well, when they said meditate, both of us kind of were taken back by it. I didn't know anybody personally who was meditating, but I thought of strangeness. It didn't seem like something that I could see myself doing. I associated with people seeing how bad they could get their life, how much pain or how much poverty and still exist. Like it was like a challenge. Walking on hot coals or laying on beds of nails or something that was weird like that. But then I said, well, what do you mean by meditate? And this entity said, sit in a quiet room and wear comfortable clothing and focus on your breathing and as your mind wanders and it will just release the thought and focus back on your breathing and I thought well that doesn't sound so difficult you would ask also if we could bring our daughter oh that's right I asked if I should bring Tracy she was 14 at the time and they said if it is the asking but it is not necessary for you to our channels and I thought how can we be something this strange <laughs> or this important. I wasn't sure how I felt about it at that time and not know it. So anyway, the tape recorder clicked off and I, now I'm frustrated because I still had more questions and our time was up. And the lady who was operating the tape recorder, I think she sensed my frustration and she said, well, do you have one last question? Like, do you want to know who your spiritual guide is or anything like that? Well, I would have never asked that question because I'd never heard of such a thing. I'd heard of guardian angel, but I hadn't heard of spiritual guide. But I said, yes, who is my spiritual guide? And then they said, we are told it will be given to you directly. You'll have a clairvoyant experience and you will know. And so our time was up and we felt so good and we went right home and we put on our bathrobes and we pulled the drapes in the living room and we sat and I had two intentions. I was going to meditate every day for 15 minutes, whatever that meant, and I was going to find out who my spiritual guide was. And they'd encouraged us to meditate together. They said it would be more powerful in our case because we were already compatible and in harmony. But we were embarrassed to do it together. And so we sat in these wing-back chairs with an etagere between us so we couldn't see each other. 
in order to not think of anything, which was what they'd encouraged us to do, or just to just focus on our breathing, I began counting my breaths as the breaths went out and came in. And we had set a timer for 15 minutes. And within, oh, I would say, three or four minutes of this focusing on my breathing, I felt very numb. It was a wonderful sensation, tingly and numb. And the timer went off, and uh, it really startled both of us. And I said, let's do it again. So we set the timer for 15 more minutes, and again, I felt that numbness. This time, I couldn't feel the chair beneath me. It was as if I was suspended there in the room and nothing else was there. I was not even aware of Jerry. And the timer went off again, and again, it startled us. And I said, let's do it again. Right. And Jerry, I think he's thinking, oh, brother, because I tend to be that way. I'm kind of all or nothing. And so we set the timer for 15 minutes again. And toward the end of that 15 minutes, again, I was numb. but. Something breathed me. That was the way I would have described it right after it happened. It was as if something greater than me was breathing me, forcing the air in and out of my lungs. It was a wonderful, loving sensation. It's like you were in a state of ecstasy. It was really exciting and really wonderful and yet frightening because we didn't know really what had happened. My teeth buzzed. They didn't chatter. They buzzed.